Um, we have a very exciting program tonight, and I'm particularly excited um, to begin by telling you that, at, that the World Science Festival has spared no expense in this production and has, and has brought out um, a time machine. <laughs> and so uh, I, wanna, I just want to operate this time machine, so let me do this. Just, they're very finicky. There it is. That's a time machine that many of you have seen, especially if you're as old as me, before the days of cable, uh, when TV stations actually ended their programming day, and uh, they went to test patterns, and then they went to static. Because actually, 1% of the static on this television, and on your televisions at home, is radiation coming from the Big Bang. So all of you have seen it at some point. In fact, it's there for everyone to see. Photons the most visible things in the universe, and it's been there for as long as TV's been there at least, but it wasn't discovered until 1965 by two people, two young would-be radio astronomers who didn't really know what they were looking for, and, uh, and then learned what it was, and, and, the, and it immediately resulted in mysteries. The mysteries that developed that had to be resolved required some of the most incredible theoretical ideas that scientists have ever developed and some of the most beautiful experiments that have been developed and we'll talk about all of that um, today and uh, that that notion that uh, that this cosmic microwave background radiation might be interesting was uh, well it was forgotten as I'll talk about what's the cosmic microwave background radiation well whenever we look out at the universe we're doing cosmic archaeology so we're looking back in time eight minutes when we look out at the Sun and that means if the sun blew up, we wouldn't know about it for eight minutes. When we look out at the nearest stars, they're about three light years away. The sun is eight light minutes. The nearest star, other than the sun, is a, is a few light years away. So we're seeing them as they looked a year ago, because a light year is the distance light travels in a year. The size of our Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years across. So when we look at distant stars on the other side of our Milky Way, we're looking back in time 100,000 years. The nearest galaxy to our own is, a, is a, a few million light years away. The nearest large galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, which is, by the way, heading straight towards us, is, uh, is about two million light years away. And the average distance between galaxies is about a million light years. So when we look at the Andromeda, we're looking at it as it looked a million years ago, and so on. And we look at galaxies as we can now see with the Hubble Space Telescope and other telescopes, we can see galaxies that are billions of light years away. That means we're looking at them, in fact, when we look at the distant coma cluster, we're looking at, we're looking at something that's five, million, five billion light years away, almost, and, and um, uh, that means that the light we're seeing from those stars emanated before our own sun formed, which is four and a half billion years ago. So the light from the, that left those stars left before our solar system even formed. And that means, by the way, when we look at those pictures, most of the stars in those pictures don't even exist anymore. They burned out. We're looking back five billion years at maybe civilizations that are long gone, that are long forgotten, as our own may be in five billion years when our sun burns out. Now, one of the great exciting discoveries which we'll talk about due to the cosmic microwave background is the realization that our universe is 13.7 billion years old. And it's amazing to me that we can say that with a straight face. When I was a graduate student, we knew the age of the universe to a factor of two, and it was a little embarrassing because there were stars that appeared to be older than the universe, which is always embarrassing. <laughs> but we worked that out. And, but we now know, due to the causing microwave background, that the age of the universe is 13.7 billion years old. But that is interesting, because that means if we're looking back in time, and we're seeing stars that are billions of light years away and billions of years old, that means if we look out far enough, we should see the Big Bang. And we could, in principle, see the Big Bang. But we can't in practice, because between us and the Big Bang, there's a wall. Not a, not a physical wall like, like the walls in this room, but effectively like it. Because as we're looking back in time, because the universe has been expanding, earlier, it was hotter. And as we look further and further back in time, we're looking at a hotter and hotter universe. And if we look back almost 13.7 billion years back in time, back to when the universe was about 380,000 years old, 
the temperature of the universe was about 3,000 degrees. And at that temperature, the radiation is energetic enough to break apart atoms, particularly hydrogen, which is the dominant element in the universe. So every time a proton tries to capture an electron and form neutral hydrogen, it's broken apart by the radiation. And that means matter doesn't exist in the form it does now as neutral atoms, but rather as a charged plasma. And a charged plasma is opaque to radiation. So that means if we try and look out further and further, we get to a point where the universe becomes opaque. Again, it's just like looking out at that wall. We can see the, barely see that wall because the light from these lights gets absorbed by the electrons on the surface of the wall and re-emitted, but the air is transparent. So I can see all the way to the wall. So when we look at the universe, we look out back to that time when the universe was opaque and hot, 3,000 degrees. And before that time, we can't see past that time. So let's run the film forward. The universe is opaque, opaque, opaque. Suddenly, at 380,000 years into its history, the temperature drops below 3,000 degrees. And then, protons can capture electrons, and matter can become neutral. And neutral matter is transparent to that radiation. So that means the radiation that was trapped before that time can now make it all the way to us, just as the light from that wall makes it all the way to me. And so a prediction of a Big Bang is that radiation should be coming at us from all directions from that surface. We call it a surface of last scattering. 13.7 billion years back created when the universe was 300,000 years old. That light has been traveling, that radiation that was trapped has been traveling since that time towards us. And it's a prediction that we should see radiation coming at us from all directions. Now that radiation isn't 3,000 degrees anymore because the universe has been expanding and cooling. So that radiation, which was once 3,000 degrees, is now cooled to about three degrees above absolute zero. And that's the radiation that was discovered by accident in New Jersey, of all places, as we'll talk about. <laughs> but it was discovered by accident, but in fact it was kind of predicted. The first person to really take the, uh, the idea of the Big Bang seriously was a, a, was a wonderful scientist named George Gamow. I think we have a picture of him here. He's really, unfortunately, unheralded. He was a brilliant scientist, but he was also a joker and a popularizer. And as Brian and I know, that sometimes people get mad at people that popularize <laughs> and, um, and don't take them seriously enough. But George Gamow really, in fact, probably could have won two Nobel Prizes for the work that he did. He, took, he was the first one to take the Big Bang seriously enough to argue that maybe in the very earliest moments of the Big Bang, light elements were created, not just hydrogen, but helium and other elements, and began to think that maybe we could use nuclear physics to understand the abundance of elements in the universe. And that idea of, of taking the physics of the Big Bang seriously was picked up by a student, Ralph Alpher, along with Robert Herman, and I think we have a picture of Ralph Alpher here, who then took the idea that maybe later on, well past the time when the light elements were formed, which was when the universe was one second old, but to a time when the universe was a few hundred thousand years old, maybe there would be a background of radiation. And they began to explore, explore that idea, but that idea was kind of um, forgotten, and uh, uh, it, it's unfortunate that it was, particularly for Alpha um, and also for Gamma, because again, they, they essentially predicted the existence of the cosmic microwave background, uh, and that was, that was a long time before it was actually discovered.